Yep, that's me. You may be wondering how I got into this situation. Well, it all started in the summer of 86. That's it. That's the clip. That's the clip you've probably seen at least once if you're even a little internet savvy. This creature, this siren head, is very popular right now. It seems as though it's 2020's version of Slenderman, and the similarities are notable. They're both long, lanky, mysterious, and spawned from the internet. While I don't think Siren Head himself is a particularly scary creature, it is neat. It's cool looking and makes cool sounds. But scary? Eh. The video that went viral on TikTok went viral because when this huge creature is seen from far away, it accentuates the scale and awe. Siren Head is less frightening to me and more interesting. It came across to me as an oddity of nature and not much else. Siren Head was actually created two years before its insane virality by Canadian illustrator Trevor Henderson, who has pioneered this found footage, or more accurately, found photo art. To create these images, he starts with a base photo, then paints in a creature with lighting that matches the environment. Finally, he plays with Photoshop filters like noise and blur to mesh the two together. Trevor Henderson is probably the best in the game when it comes to this subgenre of horror art, because his images are usually convincing, and the creatures are well designed. But let's get back to Siren Head for a moment. This video is inaccurate to how the creator usually portrays this creature. In fact, it's unproportional by like an order of magnitude. Even at 40 feet, I just find it hard to be scared by this thing. Admittedly, I'm probably biased because I've seen so many OCs that just take a guy in a suit and replace their head with a retro item, and the amount of memes around this creature doesn't help, especially with the wave of inevitable Siren Head is Real videos. Siren Head. In real life. Spe None of this takes away from Siren Head's intrigue. The simple design makes it easy to make fan art of and easy to recognize, and so far it seems that the main attraction is making memes, lore, or video games, rather than being kept awake at night. At least to most people, I think. This is just making me think how the fuck would you react in this situation? What do you do? Kill yourself? Ah, uh, yes. Because when you see an enormous monster several miles away from you, which seems to have no particular interest in harming you specifically, and seems so slow and so far away that you probably have like a few hours to escape, the first thing you do is kill yourself. Even if you got up close to it, you can imagine that its bumbling slow body and lack of vision would probably not make it effective at harming you, much less killing you. Unless you're in Fallout, of course. Although that's ignoring if it locates people by echolocation, or if it doesn't need senses because it just has supernatural abilities like Henderson has suggested. Whether a creature is effective at killing you isn't the only measurement of creepiness, of course, but I find the concept, while neat, is too goofy for me to take seriously sometimes. Some of the lore surrounding it is also just flat-out comedic, although I'm not going to be taking a lot of this lore seriously, because you'll find wiki entries that are free to edit by pretty much anyone. So you'll get entries like, The most common hunting tactic used by Siren Head is throwing shekels into the environment. Also T. Hold on. More Siren Head subspecies? <laughs> Just to be clear, despite some of my lore grievances, I really like that just a few edited images can inspire so much. It's neat to see that one dude with some decent art skills can inspire all these other creations that immerse people more in the atmosphere and behavior of this creature. Now I think the strengths of these photos is when a creature is well designed and or well hidden. Well hidden? Don't you want to see the creature? Well yes, let me elaborate. I really like the designs of some of these creatures. This thing that looks like it's made of paper ribbons forming a body and a face, that is soaked with so much supernatural energy its jaw isn't even connected, is super creative and unnerving. This horse skull creature, bluntly named Long Horse, has a really unsettling design, and is probably the best integrated monster into a base photo I've seen in his gallery. Everything from the reflection on the car hood to the way it gets darker as it recedes into the tree is just 
perfect. And once you learn that its body might be infinite, and it often appears before tragedies but does not actually cause them, makes it even more fascinating. This street horse is almost believable at first. You might think it looks like a diseased stray dog or something, but when you look closely, you notice all these details that just scream, something isn't right here. The scale of it, the needle face, it's all really unsettling. It's why I'm kind of confused that some of these designs didn't go viral like this one did. I mean, Siren Head is neat, but comparatively, these are so much eerier. However, I think there are some considerable weaknesses in other art that doesn't work quite as well at achieving its goal. Painting in creatures and making them look real in their environments is hard as hell. I tried doing some of my own and I struggled to make them not look painted in. But I think where some of these images suffer is when the creature is front and center. Nothing truly obscuring it. No shadows or darkness to really hide the bulk of it. In some of these, this makes it obviously fake. Well. Of course it's fake, but with these harsh lights, you can really see the painterliness. I swear I can even see what kind of brush they were using. I wouldn't say this is because of a lack of talent, but because of the lighting and how the creatures are positioned. Like this picture, which is basically just a shadow, is so much more convincing than this. That's why it's sort of a hit and miss with me. It's super impressive when the creature is relatively unobscured but still convincing. But on the other hand, when they are so in your face and don't fit the environment quite as well, they're kind of goofy. I really like the idea that Trevor Henderson has, and a lot of these are executed really well. But I would like to see more hiding or obscuring the creatures well enough to not be obvious, but also get that creepy vibe. And there are some examples where he's done this. This image I was staring at for a solid 10 minutes, looking for the oddity, until I eventually found it. And it's extremely subtle. I don't even know for sure if this is the edit. But through that time, I was already creeping myself out as I scanned this already pretty unsettling environment. Like the description says, the path does seem to be getting tighter as you stare forward. You get lost in the claustrophobia of nature, almost like the depths of a cave, just big enough to fit your body, or in this case, your car, but small enough to be on edge the entire time you're passing through. I don't think this level of subtlety in how the creature is hidden is necessary though, but there's an advantage in hiding creepy things well. Take Trevor Henderson's Man with the Upside Down Face series, where this distorted man can be found in each of these photos, but with a little bit more difficulty than his other images. According to Henderson, this entity only appears after the event of a tragic accident, and people don't realize the man is there until he is seen in photos. These I find are generally more convincing and more frightening. When you see these creatures near the front, the picture doesn't beckon you to explore further because there's nothing else to explore. The atmospheres of these images carry merit on their own, but imagine you seeing this creature, but there's even more hidden things you didn't notice that make it even more threatening. An example of this can be seen in this other work from Henderson. First you see this creature, then you see the others. Remember these things? These awful things? Yeah, like that, but better. Famous films like Paranormal Activity employ this technique of making you search for the scares, but a more recent film does this with more payoffs. Hereditary does things like this a lot. Now, I think a lot of horror movies are pretty lame, and a lot of things don't disturb me because I'm kind of used to it. And I liked Hereditary, but you know, I wasn't really unsettled for a lot of it. But there are a few shots that linger on certain scenes, and out of all the messed up stuff that happens in that film, these shots were the ones that creep me out the most. Unlike the jump scare riddled films that we usually get, this film makes you scan these rooms. It makes you actively search for the scares. It puts you on edge. It usually doesn't play a loud noise and jump out at you, and I find that most effective. You're just watching this screen in dead silence as you try and figure out what the shadows are trying to hide from you. And then you see it, and it's like making a life-threatening discovery. I really respect Trevor Henderson's artwork, and I realize that some of these are mostly just to show off cool-looking creatures. Hopefully this whole siren head thing will make some of these other creatures more prominent and introduce a lot more people to his work. But be warned with this whole phenomenon. Be prepared to see a lot of terrible creepypastas and Tumblr girls wanting to fuck this thing. Ooh boy. Ryan, 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 okay, what? okay. What's, what's going we, on? we have to go, we have to catch up with the trend of siren head. It, it's very important that you, that you put this siren thing on, on your what? head Where right now. Where did you now. even get that? Okay. What are you okay. doing?
Hey, time stop. To, what are you? Time to get this to work. Wait. Ah, I can't breathe. Okay. Hey, you're coming. Ah! <laughs> you gotta ah. get sawn. Arise, my siren head son. There he is, Siren Head, in the flesh. Could you end my suffering? So Siren Head, what's it like being a Siren Head? Well, besides the constant pain and loss of most of my senses, uh, it's pretty good actually, pretty good.